hello. Um, I hope this thing's on, as they say. Hi, I'm Harry Evans. This is my room. Hey, there I am. This is me live coming to you. Hi, everyone. Now, let me, I'm really not sure if I'm going to. Right, that's my room. Before we go into my study, can I just show you these stairs that the, look at my lovely warm socks, that the builders said they were going to fix and they came five days ago and they have not returned. They have left dust everywhere. Um, when I walk down the stairs, I trip over them. I hate the builders. And let me tell you, the main thing about where I write is you take things quite personally. Hey builders, I hate you. When are you coming back? Mm. Okay, let's go inside. Right, this is my study. That's my daughter's room. Hi, boss's room. There's some frozen pictures on the wall. Hi, frozen pictures. Okay, we're in my study. Now, we moved two months ago. So I'm just telling you now that this is my lovely study. It's at the top of the house, as you can maybe see. It's quite far down, <coughs> quite high up, I mean. And there's a school, but it's some uh, Easter holidays. And it's lovely and it's very bright, but it doesn't look very bright. Um, it's a little cold. And I have under my desk one heater there, another heater there. I have this radiator, totally useless. Hi, let's have a radiator the size of a piece of toast to heat this room. I have hooded top, cardi. I have these extremely warm, fluffy socks. I have this hooded top, which I wear. The other thing about being a writer is I have a bad back all the time. So these are my things to help me stretch. I have a very uncomfortable ergonomic chair, which I sit on. Um, so where should we start with my amazing tour of my office? Here we go. These are all my books. And these are all my old editions of books I've published in the past. The German edition of Love Always, Das Buch Verborgenen Wünsche. Oh yes, there's my daughter eating pasta with my boyfriend. Hello, you're very cute. There's my mum and my sister and her husband and my boyfriend doing a shot on a holiday a couple of years ago. Go on mum, down that unicum. There's some foreign editions and some audio editions. And basically, it's very nice being able to look at all of these and think, oh, wow, uh, you know, there they all are. Up here is a birthday present for a friend. And that is a swallowtail butterfly from the Papillionidae family. I knew nothing about butterflies, but I am now rewriting my ninth book, which is called The Butterfly Summer. And this is what I'm going to read to you a little bit from today. Um, it is about a girl. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> it's about, I didn't mean to do that. It's about a girl who inherits a crumbling house on a creek in Cornwall. She doesn't know anything about. And I had to do loads of research for it. I've got a terrible cold, by the way. That's why I sound a bit weird. I had to do loads of research for it today. Oh, lovely. Here is a load of post-its which have been completely useless because the book is nothing like that now. But I've wrote down the order that things come in and different bits for the past and the present. Um, I'm now replacing that all with new post-its because my lovely editor has given me notes and I'm rewriting it. That is a map of Cornwall. This is where the creek is. I've been to Cornwall lots of times. This is a mood board that when I went in to see my beautiful editor for the first time, She'd made up this mood board of how she felt a place for us, my last book, but that's it there, and um, felt to her, and she made it look completely beautiful, and I'm so happy about that. Here are all the photos for this new book, The Butterfly Summer, pictures of butterflies, pictures of clothes from the 30s. I went to the V&A, took loads of photos, had them developed, and um, there's a tennis costume I particularly like. Um, there's a house, crumbling houses, there's notes everywhere, and here, it's on my desk, some Marmite, just, <laughs> I need some Marmite, and um, some earplugs, um, because I have to, uh, completely concentrate when I'm writing. There's lots of children's books, because 
it's a bit about children's books and childhood, so I've been reading lots of those. And lots of books about butterflies. I am now obsessed with butterflies. I love butterflies. I have bored everyone rigid about butterflies. Look at this. I can identify so many of them. That is a small tortoise shell. Oh my god, this is supposed to be interesting. You're gonna be bored rigid. Okay. Um what else can I show you? That's pretty much it. Let's look at look at the photos over here. Now you see this bit here, I think. The trouble with this room that I haven't quite sorted out yet is I've got my shelves over there. I've got this crazy cupboard. It used to be a teenager's cupboard when we arrived and she graffitied all over a mirror. Here, it was like, I hate so-and-so. Um, that's got all like old storage and stuff. This is my desk area. This sofa here, up with this bit here, I think it should be a sofa, maybe. I think that would be quite nice. And then I could have a little nap in the afternoons. Um, because at the moment it's a bit bare, you know. Right, so I'm sitting down on my chair. The trouble with this chair is it rolls away. And I am going to read you a little bit. Oh, that was a very embarrassing photo of me. This is a bu The Butterfly Summer. This is a bit I'm rewriting at the moment. And I'm going to read you. Oh, amazing chin. Oh, my goodness. Let me put that up there like that. Okay. So Nina is the heroine of the book. And she is reading in the library one lunchtime and this horrible old lady comes up to her and starts yelling at her and she's looking at her really strangely. It's a very old library, a bit like Hogwarts. And uh, she starts like telling her to go away. She's being really weird with her. And Nina says, you know, the reading room downstairs might be a better place for you in future if you want complete silence. The old woman stared at me in complete silence, scanning my face eyes drinking me in hungrily. I shrank from her gaze and then she laughed throatily with a wild kind of freedom. Oh, that's very good, Nina. I froze when she said my name. Then I glanced down and saw Nina Parr scrawled on my notebook and I breathed again. Right. Well, OK then, I said, and I turned back towards my computer, sat back down because I didn't know what else to do. I heard a rustle as she pushed her, my bag aside with her foot and grunted. I stared at the screen again, pretending to read the job advert, pretending she wasn't there, and I could hear breathing, sharp, shallow. Then, after almost a minute of silence, the old woman said, You really are just like your father, you know. My skin prickled, half anger, half fear. But I didn't want to antagonise her. Right, I said. I carried on staring at the screen. Did you hear me? She said. You're very like him. I turned and looked up at her. Look, miss. I don't know your name. I'm sorry, but my father's dead. And then, because she wasn't saying anything, just staring at me, I added, I don't remember anything about him. He died when I was six weeks old, all right? The prickling on my scalp was an itch now, painful, as though the bones underneath were moving apart. As a stray beam of sunshine caught her shoulder, I looked down at the glinting brooch. I saw it was in the shape of a butterfly. A butterfly. And then I was scared, because butterflies are what killed him and I sort of hate them. So that's what they told you, is it? Of course they did. I twisted round in my chair to look at her, and I could see now that she was upset. Her face sort of crumpled, and the dark, beady eyes were huge, shining with tears. She brushed her hand away. What? I said, sure she must be able to hear my heart thumping in my chest. P perhaps it's not you, she shook her head. I, I, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't understand, I said, but she was backing away. My father's dead, I called in case she needed confirmation. Miss, I didn't know her name. Vincent, she said, staring at the floor. My name's Vincent. Miss Vincent, I called out after her, louder than anything before. My voice echoed, bouncing off the metal shelves and into the gloom. What do you mean? But she'd gone. And though after a few seconds, hesitantly, I stood up and followed her into the darkness of the stacks. I could find no trace of her. She'd vanished. Right, well, thank you very much for joining me on my Where I Write. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'd better go back to work now then. Okay, bye.